Here on The Colour of Country Life, great to be catching up again with Andrew Partridge from Michelle Wall. How are you, Andrew? Very well, thank you, Ricky. Now, it was week 50 in the wool market, and it looks like it raised its bat and celebrated it. It's had a big week. Big smack over the fence for the half century for the 50-week mark, mate. The um, EMI up 29 cents to 1467 um, largely driven by a low sort of US and a low offering. So, um, yeah, traders stepped up to the plate. We had a very, very buoyant market, a lot of lot of competition. So I uh, 20 on market indicator out of the West uh, because they had the week off, obviously, the previous week. They had to play a bit of catch-up, but their indicator for 21 was up over a dollar, uh, up to 14.70, and actually the highest price for 20 on microns in Australia. We had the 20 on market indicator in the... In the south, it went up seventy cents to, to fourteen fifty odd. So, the yeah, highest price for the for the twelve months. Yeah, and looking uh, sort of even further back, the seventeen micron price looks like it's now at the highest level it's been for a good couple of years. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it's an interesting. What's the seventeen micron indicator? There's an um, independent consultant, ICS, that um, does a bit of reporting on the US and goes back and charts all these things. And he's he's seeing the seventeen micron indicator actually looking pretty healthy in a US stance. Um, actually lower than it, than it's been in the last sort of five to five or so years, but in Australian terms, yes, exactly right. So benefiting from the lower currency, and obviously it's a bit more of a trend, and um, a bit more of a trend in these sort of lightweight garments. And finals have been a bit of the rage the last few months, particularly out of Italy, as we've been talking about. Now we know. Look at the uh, graphs uh, helpfully provided by AWEX and yourself. Uh, it, it's interesting to see this continuous sort of lower offering. We were we were capping out. I forget the technical term for it at fifty thousand uh, not that long ago. But is it usual? around this time of year to have lower offerings? It does. Yeah, actually, we're, we are offering a little bit lower than the same time last year. So we're a little bit under that mark. We're hovering around that sort of 30,000 30, sort of bar mark, and we, we sort of punch around 40 this time of the year, 35, 40,000. It's back sort of under sort of 30, 35, which is a little bit less than the same time last year, thinking it's mainly driven by the wet weather, particularly coming out of New South Wales and a bit of Victoria. It's just driving those markets down because we simply can't get the sheep shorn in time. Um, but yeah, we, we are sort of, yeah, it has been low the last couple of weeks. We've got another Fremantle standing out again next week. So there's only the two centres selling in the east. Um, so back around that 30,000 bales again. And um, currency's, up, currency's been mucking around, going up and down two cents nearly every day on this bit of US stuff that's going on. But um, yep. yeah, we, we, we're pretty positive the market's going to be OK. Yeah, the interesting one with the currency, what we're seeing with the Reserve Bank uh, here pushing up interest rates, the, um, the central bank in the US and in Europe sort of pu- pumping up rates, there's going to be that volatility, I suspect, uh, from the dollar following the share markets. So does that tend to feed into the wool market? Do we, Whenever it goes down, it goes up. Does it get volatile or does it trend a little bit more steadily than what we see with the dollar? It's basically two markets and like all these commodities I suppose, and this is a spot market obviously, we sell, we don't sell forward, we sell wool on the day so we, and we offer prices on the day and we don't, we don't, you know, we sell forward for delivery in six weeks but we step into the sale room and like the currency does change your attitude for sure on a day-to-day basis so it does create another leg of volatility and you, you sell something in Australian cents and then you go and do the conversion on the US dollar and you know, I sold it and nine and a half pieces last night into China and covered the currency at 11, 11 p.m. last night. And then I wake up this morning, the currency's half a cent higher. So I would have lost money if I ever covered the currency this morning. So um, you're playing two markets, effectively. Yeah, wow. So you really got to, got to, I guess, be on your game and keep an eye on everything that's happening because it all feeds in. It all, every little cent counts, mate. Yeah, it's a low margin business, this, this game. Um, a lot of turnover, a lot of money going through, but um, yeah, not certainly not the percentage gains you have in, say, what the banks are making and these sorts of things. And With the wool industry, we, we, we spend a lot of money buying wool, and it's a low margin business, so we rely on high turnover of money um, and then turning that money over consistently to get our profits. So, yeah, we've got to watch every cent. Yeah, and just looking at uh, what, what's up for auction next week, uh, maybe those prices will smoke a few more people out, but uh, is it a lower offering next week is what's anticipated at this stage? Yeah, so we've got Freo out, back to 30,000 bales, so just the two centres in the east. We're running down to the end of financial year, so it's a bit of a funny one. Some brokers, um, or some growers particularly, are looking to shift a bit of income into the next financial year, so these sales can, can be a little bit smaller, and we have two sales before we go into a three-week recess in July, so we're two week, two, two sales in July, and um, those sales can sometimes be a bit bigger than these, you know, these last two coming in. All right, Andrew. Well, we'll look forward to an exciting end to the trading year and uh, we'll just keep tracking it here on Country Viewpoints Friday program. Thanks for joining us. Good on you. Thanks for letting us on.